All right, this is Geometry B, Unit uh, 2, Lesson 8, I believe. And we are proving the uh, general case using coordinate geometry. Uh, what I'm going to prove is this. I'm going to write the statement. I'm going to prove, prove the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. This is one of the well-known properties of parallelograms. Okay, so we're going to prove the diagonals of all parallelograms bisect each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a graph of a generic or general case. Now here's one way I use to make sense of that. It's difficult to to give coordinates that aren't whole numbers, but that are letters. So I'm going to start with numbers. I'm going to actually use numbers, but then I'm going to replace the numbers with letters. Okay, so here we go. Let's start with numbers. Let's start with 0, 0, 0, 0, and that we'll call point A. Point B, I'm going to go to the right five units. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. So B is at 5, 0. Now one of the things you got to do, you got to make sure you use different numbers. Don't repeat the same number in, in this in, if you're going to create a general case. But I'm starting with real numbers and we're going to migrate to letters themselves. Okay. Now I'm going to go to point not C because I don't know where C is right now for a parallelogram. But I'm going to put point D over here and it's going to go, it's going to go 1 to the right and 4 up. 1 to the right and 4 up. So this is D, 1, 4. Okay. And now we have the question, where is C? Where is C? Okay. And I can count by drawing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1, 2, 3, 4. I can say 6, 4. But I want to point out something here. Okay. C, B, C has to have the same slope as A, D, right? So if I go up, if I go up 4 and over 1, right, then I need to go up 4 from B and over 1, right, over 1 from B. So the x coordinate gets increased by 1. So this is 5, and then to the right of 5 by 1 hop, 5 plus 1. Or I'm going to write it as 5 plus 1. I'm not going to write it as 6. I'm going to write it as 5 plus 1. And hopefully the reason will become apparent in a moment. So 5 plus 1. So I went 5 and I went 1 more because we went 1 to the right here. And then we're up 4. Okay? All right, so we've got a specific case. Now let's make it general, right? And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace my 5s all my fives with little a's, lowercase a's, lowercase a. All my fives get replaced with lowercase a. This is why it was important to make sure you use different numbers. So lowercase a, lowercase a. I'm going to replace all my ones with lowercase b. All my ones with lowercase b all my ones with lowercase b, ones with lowercase b, and all my fours I'm going to replace with lowercase c. Okay, and I'm going to use Desmos and demonstrate what that does for us. I know this can be really confusing, but hopefully Desmos will help, help it to make sense. This now represents a generic parallelogram. In fact, it represents all parallelograms. And let me demonstrate in Desmos here. Okay, let me pull up Desmos. Okay, and I'm going to move it over a little bit. I'm going to insert a table. And I'm going to insert uh, the table, um, first of all, before I insert a table. I'm going to say A equals 5. B equals B equals 1, C equals 4. Those are our numbers that we had, right? 
So A equals 5, B equals 1, C equals 4. So we're going to sketch this specific case. And we're going to insert a table. Insert a table. And we're going to now, instead of putting 1s and 5s and 4s, I'm going to put, I'm going to put the coordinates here. A is 0, 0. Now notice I'm not substituting 0, 0 because we're anchoring, we're anchoring the, the graph to 0, 0. That's not going to move. B is A, 0. C is A plus B and C. And capital D, point D is B, C. And then I'm going to put one final point. I'm going to put in 0, 0 again. And I'm going to have it draw a line. So I'm going to click and hold. Let's use red and turn on the line drawing feature. Let's try it again. Red, turn on lines. There we go. Okay, so there's our, there's our graph, right? Okay, but what's really cool now is if I go back up here to where A, B, and C are, I can change A. I can change A. So A is 5. When A gets bigger, it goes to the, the right-hand side grows. When A gets smaller, it shrinks. When A goes negative, it goes off to the left side, right? So by changing the value of A, we can change the parallelogram that way. By changing the value of B, we change the tilt of the parallelogram. So it can tilt to different numbers. And by changing the value of C, we change the height of the parallelogram. And I can animate those and have them dance around. I can change the, the times at which they move. Okay, and two times, right? So does it make sense now seeing this that the, the case with the lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c represents, in fact, all parallelograms, all possible parallelogram shapes, okay? Because a, b, and c get to be any number that we like, okay? Let's put a pause on it. All right, there we go. All right, so that, that, that's the big idea. And so now any proof I do with these letters is a proof that applies to all parallelograms, not just the one I have drawn. Okay, so here let's go ahead and finish drawing the parallelogram and let's finish our proof now. Okay, and our proof is going to be that the diagonals of a parallelogram, so this is a parallelogram and it represents all parallelograms, we're going to prove the diagonals of a parallelogram are bisect each other. Okay, now bisect Bisect by two, sect cut, cut in half. It, it has to do with having a common midpoint, right? And so I'm going to find the midpoints of the diagonals. And you can imagine we're going to use the midpoint formula to do that. The midpoint formula is the average of the x's and the average of the y's, or x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. And we're going to see if they have a common midpoint. Okay, so here we go. Common midpoint, let's see if they do. So the midpoint of AC, the MAC, is the X's added together, 0 plus A plus B. Those are the X's added together. 0 plus A plus B divided by 2. And the Y's added together are 0 and C added together and divided by 2. 0 plus C divided by 2. Okay. Now, I don't know, the last time you tried adding 0 to something, it doesn't change anything, right? 0 plus a plus b is just a plus b divided by 2. And 0 plus c is just c divided by 2. So there's our midpoint for, for ac. Let's see if the midpoint of bd is the same. Midpoint of bd. Okay. And let's see if it is here. So add the a's. So B and A added together, add the X's, I should say. So A plus B divided by 2. Add the Y's together, 0 plus C divided by 2. Okay, and simplify, 0 plus C is just C. So A plus B divided by 2, and 0 plus C divided by 2. They both have our C, C divided by 2. 0 plus C is C. And so they both have the same midpoint, therefore they bisect each other. So AB 
AC and VD bisect each other. Okay, and we've proven it. Okay, what's really cool if I go back to Desmos, I can in, I can insert that midpoint into my graph, right? The midpoint now is parentheses a plus b divided by 2 comma c divided by 2 and now in my dancing polygon or dancing parabola I've got the midpoint of both diagonals okay and if I took my time, took the time to do it, I could also sketch or draw the diagonals as well. Okay, but I always have a dot right in the center, right in the middle of the parabola. All right, hopefully that helps.